scouters, scouts, and guests alike. So flag etiquette. Why should we talk about flag etiquette? I've seen, and I'm sure you have too, too many lackadaisical attitudes displayed at flag ceremonies, be they scouting, civilian, sporting events. Um, not really too much is uh, put into the honor, I think, of the flag. So there are standards to show this respect. And we as scouters and scouts should be the example of showing this respect. So this presentation represents the result of some of my research into flag history, respect, ceremonies, and flag retirement. This is not presented nor intended to be taken as official BSA policy. If you find differences between what I present and the BSA policy, follow the BSA policy and let me know so I can make corrections. So first we'll do a brief history of the American flag. So we push the right button. We had the uh, Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. On June 14th, 1777, Congress came up with a description of our flag. Be resolved that it will be 13 stripes, alternating red and white. There'll be a union of 13 stars, white stars in the field of blue, representing a new constellation. Well, that was wonderful. However, that left it way open for the people that made flags in those days, because you didn't go to the star to get a, a store to get a flag, to think outside the box. And you could have horizontal stripes, vertical stripes. You could have a blue field in one corner or the other or in the center of the flag. You could have the stars scattered all over the place in that blue field. There was no description of what to do with that. So between then and now, there have been many, many revisions to what the flag is like. Now, who made the first flag? Some believe that it was designed by a New Jersey Congressman, Francis Hopkinson, and that he took it to Betsy Ross in Philadelphia to sew it. Now, Betsy Ross was an upholsterer, and in those days, upholsterers were generally the people that made flags, and they would make them for military units, they would make them for ships, and things like that. Now, we know that George Washington used to go to Betsy Ross quite a bit before he became a military commander of our armed forces because he used to do his fancy cuffs and ruffles on his shirt. Now, where did the name Old Glory come from? Well, back in, depending on what you read, 1824 or 1831, a merchant captain by the name of George William Driver was given a 17 by 20, a 10 by 17 foot flag by his friends when he became a captain of his own ship, the Charles Doggett. And when the flag was raised for the first time to the top of the mast, he exclaimed, oh glory. And then that became the nickname for American flags ever since. Now today the flag consists of the 13 horizontal stripes, seven red alternating with six white, representing the original 13 colonies and the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. Those from approximately 1812 until 1912, I believe it was William Taft, that the stars were finally put into a, a regular order. And then as the stars were added after that time, they became what we have now. They even have planned for the 51st star. But we'll talk about more of those things in another presentation in the future about the history of the flag. Now, I like this picture because it gives you three examples of display and proper use of the flag. In the upper left-hand corner, you've got a military unit. I believe those are Army. And uh, the American flag is on its right. And then to the left of the American flag are the other flags. Um, looks like the Army flag, and I'm not sure what the other ones are of that unit but they're all in an equal line and the American flag is just slightly higher than the rest of the flags. And a nice thing you'll see here, and we'll see a difference in a different picture, all of the color guard are approximately the same height. Now in the center picture, you've got a Navy uh, unit. And again, the American flag is on its right. And that flag bearer is holding that flag pretty much straight up and down. 
The middle flag bearer is carrying, I think, a state flag, and it is slightly slanted. And again, with the United States Navy flag, he is carrying it at a slight angle, so that the American flag is the tallest of all the flags. And in the lower right corner, you have the proper draping of a casket with the American flag, which has the field of blue with the stars over the left-hand side or the left chest of the person that is in the casket at the head of the casket. Now red symbolizes hardiness and valor, white purity and innocence, and blue representing vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Where did the Star Spangled Banner come from? Well, on September 13th, 1814, Francis Scott Key, who was a lawyer and an amateur poet, went to a British ship in Baltimore Harbor to plead for the release of a civilian that had been arrested by the British that day. Well, he came, secured the release of that individual. However, it was late in the day and they didn't want to let Francis or this other individual off of the ship because they were preparing to bombard Fort McHenry that night. So he was aboard the ship while the British Navy bombarded Fort McHenry on the night of the 13th. And on the morning of the 14th, when I don't know, either he awoke or he finally went up on deck, he saw that the American flag was still flying above Fort McHenry. And that's when he wrote the poem, The Defense of Fort McHenry. Later on, it was changed to the Star Spangled Banner. And a few years, even after it was written, it was uh, put to music, and that became our Star Spangled Banner. The left picture, the Iwo Jima Memorial at Arlington, Virginia. And on the lower right, the Arizona Memorial Pearl Harbor. Now, there's a few locations where the American flag, and actually it's more than a few nowadays, where the flag is flown 24 hours a day by presidential proclamation or by law. Well, Fort McHenry, where this all pretty much started, Flag House Square, the Iwo Jima Memorial, the Green in Lexington, the White House. Interesting, the United States Custom Ports of Entry, and then at Valley Forge. There are six flags that were placed on the moon by the six Apollo landings on the moon. And interestingly enough, the first Apollo landing, Apollo 11, when the lunar module was taking off to rejoin the command module, the exhaust gases from that launch knocked over the American flag at that site, so that flag is still lying on the moon. The flag properly displayed at the Pentagon and ground zero. Now there's a few words that describe the different parts of our flag. We don't use them very often, at least not all of them. The band, which is the narrow strip of canvas along the edge of the flag that goes next to the staff. This is also generally where your grommets are. This is also called the heading. The canton, which is the field of blue, which the stars are in. Color or colors is generally the military expression talking about our flag. Dip, to dip the flag is to lower it and salute. This refers to a flag of an organization, military unit, a state, or a city. The American flag is never dipped in honor. Ensign is a Navy expression spoken of, of, of the American flag. The fly is the length of the flag. Grommet, the island through which the halyard is fashioned. Half staff. In mourning, as a sign of mourning, we lower the flag to half staff. This is not necessarily the full half of the uh, flag staff that is on. Halyard is the rope that is used to raise the flag on a flagpole, also called the hoist rope. Peak, raise the flag to the peak, the highest point it can be raised. Point of honor is the field of blue or the union, which is another term for the same thing. And staff is the flagpole on a Navy ship referred to as the mast. Title IV, United States Flag Code, Chapter 1. Here you'll find everything you want to know that is the law about how to honor our flag, how to display it, how to hoist it, how to lower it, how to pass it, and modifications of rules by uh, customs and presidents over time. Um, we'll talk about this more again in the history of the American flag in a different presentation. But if you want to find out what the law is, this is the law. However, it is a law that unfortunately, in many instances is never really enforced, but it is there. Now, I can't remember where it was in my readings, I believe it was probably in the American Legion sometime in the past, that as long as you conduct 
uh, your activities with our flag with dignity and respect, we can't do any harm. That is the most important thing. Dignity and respect and honor the flag Florida stands for. So, proper positioning of the American flag. Again, this is not meant to be the be all and the end all information about the flag, but hopefully this will just give you a starting point for where you can uh, teach your unit, teach individuals, and then make a flag ceremony of your own. So when the flag is displayed flat against the wall, hung in a window, it can be hung vertically or horizontally, but the stars, the field of blue, should always be to the observer's left. If you're in an auditorium and meeting room, even church, I went to a funeral at one church and they had the flags reversed on the altar, um, but the flag should be to the speaker's right, to the observer's left, when you are looking at the stage. Should you display the flags in cross stabs with another flag, the American flag should be on its own right and the staff should be in front of the staff of the other flag. So when our flag is carried in a presentation, if it is carried by itself, then it should have an honor guard with somebody on each side of it. If it's carried with other flags and it can be in the center in front of the other flags, but generally you will see it to the right of any other flags that are being carried by a particular unit. We'll see, well, we saw that in the picture before. We'll see a couple others. The US flag should be carried straight up or at a slight 30 degree angle. Again, the United States flag is never dipped. Here we have a fire unit. And again, so one individual carrying the American flag on either side, the honor guard of firemen, each carrying a fire ax. The center picture, some military units, since they have rifles, I guess, the American flag is carried almost straight up on the right, and the organization's flag is carried on the left and at a slightly greater angle. Now here in the lower right picture, you will see where I was talking about watching the height of your color guard. This looks like uh, various military uh, individuals carrying the flags. You have the American flag on its right. And then it appears you have the Army flag, the Marine Corps flag, the Navy flag, and then it probably should be the Air Force and then the Coast Guard. Now, interestingly enough, the Navy individual in his white uniform seems to be the largest member of that color guard. You need to pay attention to the color, to the size of your uh, members of your color guard because with him being as large an individual as he is compared to the other people in that color guard, tip of that, tip of that Navy flag appears to be slightly taller than the American flag. Perhaps it's an optical illusion, maybe it is tipped forward and we're seeing that. But if you have something like that, if you have a particularly tall individual, you probably should have that individual carry the American flag or you can adjust the flag cup that the individual are we individuals are wearing as they carry the flag in a parade. Now, carrying, carrying the flag, crossing in a presentation, this befuddles our youth and it befuddles adults. It befuddled me when I first started getting into this. So when you're in a room or an auditorium, we'll use the center picture here first um, with the center aisle. So the American flag will be in the rear on the right of the aisle. The pack flag or the unit flag will be on the left of the center aisle. The commander who will call the orders for the, for the uh, actions of the color guard will tell them to go forward and they can either if he just tells them to you know forward march the american flag as it gets to the first aisle needs to cross to the left in front of the unit flag and go to its proper flag uh, holder and then the other flag after the american flag has crossed it goes to the right to its proper flag holder now a couple of things to think about before you even get to that point. Ceremony should be solemn and respectful. The master of ceremonies or the assistant scout master, the SPL or the assistant cup master, they should inspect the color guard before the ceremony. Either 
those individuals or maybe a responsible adult should make sure that the flag stands that are placed at the front of the room are the correct flag stands for the flags that are being used. I have come across at times myself when you go up to the flag stand with the flag, the diameter of the flagpole is greater than the hole in that flag stand and the poor flag bearers be fuddled by what to do next. And then someone's rushing up with the proper flag stand. So you wanna make sure you got the right size flag pole for the right size flag stand. Uniforms should be sharp, they should be tucked in. You don't wanna be sloppy. Um, the leader that issues commands gives one command at a time and waits for it to be executed. Prior to the event beginning, the color guard should separate themselves from the rest of the unit and go to where they need to be. Now we're gonna get into a little controversial area here because I've seen it done differently in different presentations that I've found on the internet. The color guard should be silent during the ceremony, during the presentation of the colors, during the pledge, they should remain at attention. When they have posted the colors, when they have put the flags into the flagpole, they may be ordered separately to salute the flag, and then two, while the rest of the auditorium holds their salute or hands over their heart until they complete the pledge. The color guard should not do the pledge. After the pledge and the flags are placed, the color guard should be dismissed or retired so they can return to their den or to their patrol so that they can then participate in the scout oath and law with their particular group. So that's where there's some controversy. Do they say the pledge? Don't they say the pledge? Um, I've seen it several different ways in several different ceremonies that I've pulled up on, on the internet. Um, we'll talk about that at the end here. The other, other way that they have this here is um, if you don't have a center aisle, if you just have the people coming up the side aisles, again, the American flag is on the right of the room, the unit flag is on the left of the room. When they get to the front, the American flag crosses to the left first. The other flag after the American flag is passed, it goes to the right to their flag stand. The flag bearer should go behind the flag stand. And if you just have the two flags, when they're told to post the colors, the American flag bearer needs to listen for the first thump that the other flag has been placed, and then he can put down the American flag. The American flag goes down last, and then when you're retiring the flag at the end of the ceremony, at the end of the meeting, the American flag comes out first. When, when they, um, wrong button, right button. Some other commands and some other ceremonies here you can read. When you're re closing this uh, event, the American flag, when you retire the colors and they're called, you know, rise the colors, American flag comes out first, unit flag comes out second. They can meet at the center aisle. The American flag is already on the right and the unit flag is already on the left. So they're in the proper position. Um, number of different ways to give commands. And in fact, there was one ceremony I found that, um, Actually, when the flags got to the front of the room, the commander called color guard halt, and then he gave the order, please cross the colors, so that the American flag then went across into the front. And then he um, said, color guard, post the flag of, in this instance, the great state of California, and the flag of PAC 136. And then those flags went to their proper thing. And then, those flags were posted, but the American flag bearer was still holding the flag. And he said, present the colors. And then the American flag bearer gave the flag about a 30 degree angle. And then they did the Pledge of Allegiance. And then after the Pledge of Allegiance, he gave the order to then post the flag of the United States. And then they posted the flag. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, again, you need to tailor the ceremony to your youth. If you're doing something with uh, tigers or first year Cub Scout, you might want to do something really simple. And you don't even have to have a big flag. You can have one of the large yard flags on a pole for them to use. They can practice this in their dens. Uh, when you get up to the Boy Scout level, they should have done it for a while as they've done it, you know, in the Cub Scouts. And then you can start to do some other things. 
we'll talk about out there ceremonies in a bit. Um, so, and then there's one more, and this is a Boy Scout flag ceremony. And again, it shows the American flag bearer on the right, who crosses over to the left, and the Scout flag bearer will cross over to the right. Just some points that I remember happening to us the first few times we did a few things in a, in a firehouse meeting room. Watch the height of the ceiling and the height of your flagpoles. It's not infrequent to uh, mark up a few ceiling, flag, ceiling uh, tiles or perhaps uh, impale the uh, diffuser on a light up on the ceiling. So you may need to carry the flags at an angle or adjust your length of your flagpoles. When they arrive at their stands, they need to be ready to insert them. And on opening flag ceremony, the American flag goes last. And on the closing flag ceremony, the American flag comes out first. Something we see um, at camp often, but we'll, we'll get to that too. Whenever you are present and see the flag hoisted or lowered in your uniform, are not in uniform, you can you know, hold your right hand over your heart if you're in civilian clothes. If you're wearing a hat, and I love the way they say this, you know, hat should go over your shoulder and your hand over your heart. If the flag passes you in your uniform, come to attention and salute it until it passes you. If you pass the flag, you should come to salute six steps before reaching it and hold it for six steps past it. If you're in formation, you salute at the command of the leader. If at camp, or if you're at an outdoor ceremony, um, I remember we did a flag ceremony at um, Disneyland, Disney World, and I can't think of the basket place that we, I even got to do the flag ceremony there. Um, if you're not in your proper position when the flag ceremony starts, don't rush to get there. Stay at your place, stand at attention, and give the appropriate honors at the proper time. If you're in uniform, you salute. If you're in civilian attire, take off your hat, hold it over your left shoulder, and hand over your heart. When the color guard has been dismissed, then go to your proper place. People that have lived on military bases will know all about this when they raise flags in the morning and you hear the bugle call across the camp. Across the camp, you say, "Oh, gotta wait another 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 two minutes until they finish this, and then I can continue where I'm going." Members of the armed forces and veterans who are present but not in uniform may render the military salute in the manner provided for individuals in uniform. Hoisting and lowering our flag. If you're doing an outdoor ceremony, the commander of the detail, particularly before the opening ceremony, um, should take the flag detail to the flag poles that you're using Make sure the halyards are working properly. Make sure that the clips are working properly. Um, familiarize them with what is gonna be the top clip and what's gonna be the bottom clip. Um, and then we can even have them try them. And then make sure that they know how to properly secure the rope to the cleat that is on the flagpole. I have done on the flag sometimes is put a top and a bottom on the American flag so they don't inadvertently raise it the proper way. So depending on the size of the flag or the size of the youth that are doing it, you need to have at least two people, sometimes three. When raising the flag, you attach it to the line and you keep it close to the pole by holding that line taut while the flag bearer is attaching it to the, to the grommets and then holding the flag so that it's not gonna touch the ground. Then you raise the flag briskly and when you're retiring the flag in the evening, you lower it slowly. When you lower the flag, the flag bearer is the one that catches the flag and unfastens it, while the other individual uh, then secures the hoist to the cleat. When hoisting the flag with other flags, the American flag should reach the peach be peak before any other flags. When lowering the flag, the United States flag should not leave the peak until the other flags have left theirs, and the flag should not reach the flag bearer before the other flags have reached their flag bearers. You don't raise the flag before sunrise or lower it after sunset to indicate morning it's raised to half staff. 
When you do that, you first raise it to the full peak of the flagpole and then lower it to your half staff mark. In the evening, when you retire the colors, you raise it to the peak and then you lower it down to the bottom. The flag may be ordered half staff for newly deceased members of the state, federal government, law enforcement officers, but this is by order of the president or the governor. Proper carrying of the flag. I've found photos showing it carried both ways, and I really didn't find anything in the laws or other things about whether it should be carried point up or point down. Again, I think if you're holding it respectfully like that, um, there's nothing wrong with it. Things not to do with our flag. Out of respect for our flag, you should never dip it for any person or thing even though state flags, regimental flags, unit flags, state, they can be dipped as a mark of honor. You should never display it with the union down. That is a signal of distress. Um, I remember there was some mystery on television where somebody put their stamp on upside down on their envelope when they mailed it to someone that <gasps> they're in trouble. So never with the union down. Don't let the flag touch anything beneath it. Shouldn't touch the ground, shouldn't touch floor, shouldn't be touching water from a dock, shouldn't be touching merchandise below it. It should not be carried horizontally. It should always be flown aloft. You see it at the sporting events and that where they pull the flag out on the field and do that. Again, it's enthusiasm, it's temporary, and it's not going to be kept that way. So at first I was sort of pretty much against it, but I thought, eh. It's only a momentary thing. It's not something that people are gonna be holding out there all day. But you would not have a flag displayed like that on a float. It should be on a staff if it's gonna be on a float. Should not fasten or display it where it's gonna be damaged. So you don't wanna have it someplace where it's gonna be whipping against something that's gonna cause the uh, ends of it to get snagged and, ta and uh, tattered and that. You know, shouldn't place anything on the flag. Letters, insignia, designs of any kind. I found um, something where they talked about down in the state of Texas, somebody had used masking tape to put some sort of a symbol or something on a flag and they were actually arrested and went to court, but then the, the charges were dismissed. You don't use it to carry things or to hold anything. You should not use a flag as wearing apparel, bedding or drapery. Don't use it as a costume or athletic uniform or a flag patch can be put onto patriotic organizations, military personnel, police and such. Should not use our flag for ad advertising purposes or print it on paper napkins, boxes, or anything intended for temporary use or just to be discarded. It shouldn't be draped or drawn back in folds. If you want to use some sort of a bunting, then there is bunting that can be gotten and you have the blue on top and the red on the bottom. When the flag is worn out, otherwise not suitable for display, should be destroyed in a dignified manner, preferably by burning. Our flag, an actual flag, should not be used as an article of clothing, a cape or a towel, but something having stars on a blue field, having red and white stripes on it, clothing, hats, swimsuits, neckerchiefs, is fine as long as an actual flag was not used to do this. Dignity and respect. Um, the enthusiasm of Olympic athletes where they grab the American flag and wave it behind them. Again, sort of a fit of enthusiasm. Holding our flag. I trust everybody has had the opportunity to fold the American flag at one time or another. This is one picture a little bit blurred as it got larger. Here's another one. Um, so when the flag is brought down from the flag staff, and the flag bearer is the one holding the flag while the other individual is uh, securing the halyard. The flag bearer should hold the end, the heading, which has the blue field on it, and then the other individual will get the end of the flag that has the stripes. It will say the flag bearer will then bring his right hand, which has the stripes, over to his left hand and join the two pieces, and the other individual will follow suit. And then they will grasp the folded edge and the two loose edges and the bearer will again bring those together and the other individual will follow suit. 
So now you have the flag quartered lengthwise and you will have the field of blue with stars on the top and the bottom. The individual at the end of the stripes will then take his left hand and bring the corner of that, fl that flag over to the right hand side in a triangle. Once he has that triangle, you will flip it and then you will fold it over and flip it and fold it over. And you should generally end up with 13 folds and you have a field of blue with the white stars and maybe a couple inches of flag left, maybe just the heading, which will then be tucked into the remainder of the flag. Um, there are ample displays and descriptions and showings of how to fold a flag on YouTube. A lot of good stuff on YouTube. Um, one, one group I like, they even showed all their bloopers, uh, which boy brought some cringes, I tell you. But um, this is something that you can practice if you're by yourself at home and you have nothing else to do and you have an American flag, clear off your dining room table, which might be cluttered right now, and uh, you can practice holding the flag that way. Retiring our flag. When the flag is no, in such a condition that it is no longer a fitting emblem for display, it should be destroyed in a dignified manner such as burning. Well, I've, I've done a few flag retirement ceremonies and you have to have a very, very hot bed of coals and make sure you have a large enough bed of coals to consume the flags that you're gonna be retiring. If you're retiring 150 flags, you need to have a large bed of coals. Being scouters and scouts, exercise care with the weather conditions, particularly if it's a windy day. You may not want to have a big fire and be just, you know, retiring a bunch of flags. Have your fire safety equipment readily available. The ceremony should be done with dignity and respect. Watch out our youth. Flames seem to excite them. Um, prior to the actual retirement of the flags, you may want to have patriotic music taps, patriotic readings might be done. Or you might just simply want to give a simple explanation of what is going to be done and then conduct the rest of the ceremony in silence. There are no absolute rules. You will see many, many different ways of retiring the flag, uh, particularly scouting units, VFW posts, and the American Legion posts. To avoid pollution, you really don't want to burn plastic or nylon synthetic flags. Um, it gives off a nice black smoke. And if you don't have a hot enough fire, it's gonna leave a great plastic mess in the bottom of your fire pit. Another way to respectfully fire the flag is by cutting it into pieces. Then it is no longer a flag, but a bunch of material. The union should be cut from the flag intact. Do not, do not cut through the stars. Then the flag may be cut lengthwise along the stripes, although you do not necessarily have to separate and cut each individual stripe, unless you don't have a lot of flags, and you want each member of your unit who's participating in the ceremony to have an opportunity, then you can cut each individual stripe off of the flag as you wish. Then these are pieces of material. If you have a textile recycling program in your community, you could then bag all this material and put it there. If not, it may just be disposed of as any other material since this is no longer a flag. After the flag ceremony is done and when the ashes have cooled, they should be taken and buried discreetly someplace else. And another thing I like to do is I have my old rock dirt screener and I like to screen the ashes and take out the grommets and save them to give to the participants of the flag ceremony at, a, at a, you know, another time not too far afterwards. I have put them on red, white, and blue ribbons. I have just put them on a little chain or a little lanyard. And um, Angelique had a nice idea there about, um, they have a small carbiner and they put the little grommet on the carbiner then for all the flag ceremonies they participated in and they have it on a little lanyard for them to wear too. And these are some different things that you can do. Where are you going to find material about doing our flag? American Legion website under the programs area and then there's flag advocacy and they have a number of different uh, sections in there that you can go to. 
which would give you more information about the flag. I used the Boy Scout Handbook, the 1963 edition, because it had better pictures than the current one. Uh, and if you find older Scout books, you'll even find better flag information in them than the current one. Title IV, the United States Flag Code, Chapter 1. Ten Things to Know by Kerry Snyder on, on Brian on Scouting uh, blurb that he, blog that he had. And uh, Mr. Steiner is still active in, I believe it was the state of Texas. And I got his presentation too, uh, which was much more formal than myself, I think. And then you have, um, amazingly, Martha Stewart had 12 rules of American flag etiquette, which was worth looking at. Flag Man of America is an interesting website. USFlag.org, that, that, that one was very good. They had many, many informations and in, uh, other sites to go to for that. It's always good to get a bibliography from somebody else that's done other research. And then a visual history of the American flag, capital fourth by public broadcasting. And then, like I said, YouTube, you can find all sorts of assorted videos for ceremonies, retirements, folding, um, different events that uh, the flag has been used in. Um, you can then find drum and bugle corps. You can find drum units. Uh, you can see military units uh, doing different drills. Very, very, very good. And then just web searches for any question you can think about for the flag. So I hope this gets you started. Maybe it's a refresher. Maybe it'll add to something. Maybe it'll just pique your curiosity. When I first watched some of those YouTube videos, oh my gosh, I said, oh, what are they doing? Oh, I cringed. But then the next day or so, I thought over another cup of coffee that uh, you know, these ceremonies were being done by our youth. You know, they're learning, they're young. They don't often have the strength or the coordination to handle the flagpoles that they're given or the retention of what they're supposed to do when they're carrying the flags, if, particularly if they haven't had a rehearsal, you know, prior to doing it. Cub Scouts in particular. So you need to adjust the ceremony to the youth that are doing it. Maybe you need to change the size of the flags and the flag staff for the, the boys or the girls. And it's our duty to teach them correctly, to instill in them a sense of dignity and respect that our flag deserves. Thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, hope it's helped you. And uh, open to questions, comments, or other ideas. We have a little time. So, um, Mike, Mike we have a question that was posted on chat. Yeah. Um, they asked was, uh, there was a flag that people used. They weren't sure that, what the name was, but they think it was police related with the different colors from the US flag, but same design. Um, yeah, is that, stripes. right, is that considered disrespect to the US flag? I don't believe so. It, that, um, I, I, one of my neighbors was actually flying that, and I looked them up, and I forget exactly what it was about, but I think it had something to do with uh, police force, if I, if I remember right. It wasn't, it wasn't anything disrespectful that I remember reading about. We can look that up again. Yes. Did anybody else have any other questions? Anything interesting you do with your units for flag ceremonies? A chance to share. If you're shy to speak up, you can always put it in the chat and I'll be happy to say it for you. <laughs> I think Bob McMillan, do you have something? You're muted right now, so you're going to need to unmute yourself. Let's see. There you go. Bob, do you have something? Yes. Uh, if anybody has any flags that that they would like respectfully retired. Uh, if you wanna turn them into council offices or else once we get released, uh, if, if you wanna give it to any of the summer camp staff, we will have a ceremony at least one period during camp, if we have camp, uh, because in all honesty, camp is still up in the air. I don't know if you've heard officially, but the first week of camp has been canceled. Okay, that, that's been on the website. Uh, everybody should know about that. Uh, there is a survey out that has been issued by the camp staff asking pertinent questions 
uh, likes, dislikes? Uh, what would you like to be? Uh, how, how would you like camp to proceed if we can have camp? Um, if, if you want to call up the council offices, talk to Ted, talk to anybody who, who uh, I guess most of, of them are on their private phones, but if, if you want to discuss, if you are registered there for first period, uh, you have probably been already contacted. Uh, but if not, call up and they can discuss possibly moving you to second, third, or fourth period. If you have problems with leadership, we we are trying to develop a provisional scoutmaster uh, for units that ha have a shortage of trained adults. Uh, we are trying to bend over backwards, really. Everybody has had to adjust so much, but... Uh, at the initial question, any flags you would like retired, we will have a ceremony at camp. Okay, thank you. There was another question um, about maybe some ideas for Zoom flag ceremonies. Any suggestions, Mike? Unit for unit flag ceremonies? Uh, for um, Zoom, yeah, for over Zoom. <laughs> over <laughs> Zoom? Yeah. Oh. Well, you can have some patriotic music in the background. Um, there's a lot of it out there. Um, and if you have your family, which you have your, if you have scouts in your family at home, you can have them do the ceremony. Um, you can get, again, like I said, you can get smaller flags if you want. Uh, you can get that little bitty one. You can get the one that's a little bit bigger. I don't know, 18 by 12 or something like that. You know, particularly if they're smaller boys. If they're larger boys, you could use the outdoor flag that you you know use on your uh, angle uh, holder you know away from the building that's usually a three by five and that's not too big for uh, indoor or you can hold the flag ceremony outdoors and you could either have them uh, you know hold the flag um, do the pledge and then you could even post it on your building or if you're gonna continue to do your meeting on the outside say using a phone or a tablet you could, um, you know, screw it into your fence post or something and have them post the flag, you know, on the angled bracket on the fence post, and then you could remain outside for the rest of, you know, your portion of the meeting or whatever. Um, what else could you do? I like, and uh, generally I've done this at retirement ceremonies um, or sometimes at uh, something when we've had adults at camp uh, for like uh, IOLS or Baloo or something like that. I particularly, well, at the flag retirements, I particularly like reading the citation for the most current Medal of Honor winner that describes his action that caused him to be awarded the Medal of Honor. I, I, I just think that's a nice thing to do. Um, there are some readings that are gonna be in a narrative portion that Angelique is gonna mysteriously somehow get to you. And there's a few, few readings in there. Uh, there is the Red Skelton, uh, his interpretation of the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. There, I, I don't have it in there, but you will find it either on U.S. flag or the flag man. They have um, the reading by John Wayne about the Scout Laws. And there's also, I believe, Jimmy Stewart does the Scout Laws also with an interpretation of it. Um, and then I've got a reading on there about uh, the Cub Scout and a flag ceremony at his father's funeral. Uh, I also have a thing with an older man talking about what's happening now with the flag, you know, things like that. A uh, couple paragraphs, maybe not terribly long. The one about the, the Cub Scout and the funeral, that's, that's quite long, but it's, that, I always, it's a tearjerker for me every time I read that book. Uh, Chicken Soup for a Veteran Soul. Um, so those are some ideas, uh, something you could do. I think particularly music, because a lot of, a lot of our youth don't hear the kind of patriotic music anymore. And uh, reading is <clears throat> uh, something they're not going to look for themselves. But, um, you know, I think if it's, if it's read to them, most kids like to be read to because they're a little lazy. <laughs> yes. Okay, did we have any other questions? Hey, Bob, I like your background. 
Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. We unmuted it. Uh, unmute. Oh, yeah, nice background, Bob. There you go. <laughs> Angie, are you punishing me? I Thank just, you very I, much. It's, it's I just try and keep people muted. Uh, so otherwise, you get a lot of feedback, and it becomes really hard to hear. Did anybody else I have any? I will not be muted. <laughs> I beg to differ. I've got control of the keys. Watch that finger. <laughs> All right. Did anybody else have anything for Mike? Our, yes, Sean. Um, let's unmute Sean. Okay, go ahead. Mike. Um, Hi, Sean. A lot of times in my neighborhood or driving around, I see businesses with tighter flags that are ripped, shredded. And I feel compelled as a veteran and as a scout to say something to them. But sometimes mm -hmm. when I do, I get a different reaction than what I expected to receive from them. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. How do you handle something like that? So we're talking about flag adequate. Not a, you know, going there to, to bring it to their attention is always a good thing. I used to have to do that to the hospital I worked with because that flag flew out there 24 hours a day. And yeah, sometimes it would really get whipped bad. And I would tell them, and fortunately, I found the right person to talk to him. He would take care of it. But, uh, yeah, businesses and other things. I would then, if you belong to an organization, if you belong to the Legion or the VFW, something like that, I would bring it to their attention so maybe they could send a letter or somebody from, you know, the organization might go there. Um, all, you, all you can do is bring it to their attention. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the only other thing is if you do belong to an organization and depending on the whatever size flag they're flying, the organization might want to give you a new flag. Okay. Yeah, that, that'd be something to do. And then, you know, if they do something like that, you know, put a note in there saying, please give us the old flag and then you'll, you know, we will dispose of it properly. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a hard thing. Yeah, I've, I've gone to some things and yeah, gotten some, uh, you know, mind your own businesses, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Anybody have any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay, then uh, Mike, thank you very, very much for uh, sitting with us today and teaching us about the American flag. Um, we will provide this recording online um, and as, long, as well as any other um, documents that Mike wants to share with us. Uh, so thank you very much for coming, and I'd like to let everybody know there's our next roundtable breakout session is going to be on Monday, and it is going to be about um, spicing up your camping. So Kevin Kintorski is going to talk to us about that one. He's got some really great information to share. So thank you all for coming. Have a good night. Thank you. Keep scouting. Have a good evening.